We're continuing to look at how to fuzz with OWASP. zap. We're just going to do a little bit more complicated of an example. So in this case, I already have Firefox browsing through Zap. I've used Foxy Proxy to make sure that all the traffic is going through Zap. Zap is the proxy. You could also set this up just in the normal settings inside of Firefox. And I'm going to go ahead and browse to a page where the way you have to fuzz is a little bit more complicated than just fuzzing the whole entire field. So we'll go to injection and other and the CBC bit flipping page. In this page, we want to fuzz the bytes inside of this initialization vector to cause the user ID and the group ID to change to zero. So one of the things you can do is you can fuzz the different characters that are inside the initialization vector. So we want to intercept the page and if you look inside of your list you'll see the page but also one of the easiest ways is in your history the last page that you intercepted will always be at the bottom of the history or in case it's sorted it'll be the highest ID. For example, if you sort it by URL or something, you may mess up the order, but it's the highest ID is the last one. So here's the initialization vector. And let's say that we had already determined that byte number five was the field that we wanted to fuzz. So we go over to one, two, three, four, and five. And the way you would have determined byte number five was the one was is by fuzzing each byte in turn and watching how the user ID and the group ID values change. So if we want to fuzz a byte, then there's 256 possible values, and we need to send 0 through 9 and A through F through this first A, and then do the same for the B, because the A, B together make up the value of the byte. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to select them one at a time. So I'm going to select the A and hit fuzz, and that's going to highlight the A. And then we'll send in the payload. So in this case, I'm just going to do it manually. And notice I was careful not to leave a carriage return line feed at the end because it'll actually try to fuzz with a blank value. Now I'm going to select the B independently. And this time instead of manually typing in 0 through 90 through Z, I'm actually going to pick that value from file fuzzers just to show a different way to do it. So I'm going to go to the base and then base 16, which will be 0 through 9 and 8 through F. Exact same result. So we have 16 values getting injected where the A is and 16 where the B is, and those will be all possible combinations. So we'll get 256 injections total. Start the fuzzer. Wait until it's done. Now we got to figure out how to search these results. But it's not too bad. We're just looking to see where the user and ID and the group ID are 0, 0, 0. So again, let's recreate a previous step that we would have done to figure out that byte 5 was the one we wanted to fuzz for user ID. So one at a time, we would have taken each of these fields and turned them to something like zeros and noticed that the digit that we were after was changing. So by default it's 100, but of course we want to look for 000, but there could be 000 all over this page, just by coincidence. If we right click on the page and inspect the element, we'll see that the context is, is there's a TD, a table data field, and then the value, space, parenthesis, and so on and so forth. 
So let's right click on this and say edit is HTML and then just grab this first part here. That'll be enough of a pattern hopefully to make it a unique, the, the unique 000 that we want to see and not just some random 00 like this one here. All right, so let's go over to the search. We're going to search the HTTP fuzz results. We're going to paste in, but remember we want to see 000, so let's change the one to zero and that's the pattern we're going to look for. And here's the request and response that have that value. You can see I'm highlighted here. Again, we just double click on the entry in the search window and it brings it up into the request response window up top. Now what we want to do is we want to know what value in that fifth byte actually caused it to be 000. So let's look at the request that Zap made. Count five bytes. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice that instead of being AB, it's AA. So a value of AA is what causes that one to turn into the zero. Then we can do the same for the eighth byte, which is the one that affects the group ID. So quickly to do that, let's go back over to the history. And we'll pick that area there. We'll just pick the two to start with. Say fuzz. Set the payload. This time just to be a little bit quicker, I'm going to pick the one right out of the file. The jbro fuzz file that had the base in it. 16, add, hit OK, we'll pick the, the 5 out of 25, and do the add again, we'll start the fuzzer. Do the search. This time we get two. Remember there's the original one where the user ID turned to 000 and then there's the second one where the group ID turned to 000. So we click on the second one, the group ID is 000. Go to the request to see what the value is. It's 24 right here. And now we know how to go back to the page and win this game here. So we said the first one, fight 5, had to be AA, and then we said the 25 had to be 24, and byte position 8, and then we have to send that in, and uh, that's how we turn the user ID and the group ID to 000. So in this example, we actually saw where instead of injecting a, an entire field with a bunch of values, we actually kind of picked the field apart just a little bit and we injected two different places inside of the field independently to form combinations of injections. And hopefully this video will help you in testing your applications.